Alright guys, today we're going to continue our build series on our 10 second trailblazer project. And if you guys aren't familiar with this project, we are attempting to build the ultimate streetcar. I'm talking heat, AC, all the creature comforts, and I want this thing to go tens in the quarter mile. In previous episodes, we talked about our plans for the engine. As you guys may or may not know, this is the factory chassis for the Vortec 4200, and that is definitely one of our favorite engines to mess with on this channel. We plan to install an 80 millimeter turbo with an RTEC turbo manifold and a custom forward facing intake manifold. But people are often very fixated on the engine and how much horsepower it makes, and they overlook other parts of the vehicle that are also very important. Things like the transmission or the torque converter can totally change the driving experience of the vehicle. And you should really think about upgrading other components if you're planning to add horsepower, like the drive shaft or the subject of today's video, the rear differential. Now, these cars came factory with a Chevy 10 bolt rear end. And we've used Chevy 10 bolts in the past with decent success. Now, 10 bolts came in a lot of ring gear diameters. And you can think of the ring gear diameter as sort of the uh, general strength of the rear. So if you have something that's like a 7.5, they're generally pretty weak. On the other hand, if you have something like a, a nine inch, they're very robust. Or if you're way off the deep end and you're making crazy horsepower like the guys at the Cletus McFarlane YouTube channel or the Steve Morris YouTube channel, you'll see that they're going to 11 inch and 12 inch ring gear diameters just for the additional strength. In our case, we're going with a Chevy engine, a Dodge transmission, and a Ford rear diff. So we got the big three covered and we're combining it all into one vehicle to uh, build hopefully the best street car. Now, as you can see, we've already removed the rear diff from this vehicle. And that's because we are in the process of converting it to the Ford 8.8. But I wanted to briefly talk about the suspension type that is underneath the back of this vehicle. Now, it is very popular in drag racing to see a car converted to what is called a parallel four link. Basically, how this is set up is there are uh, two top bars and two bottom bars that go forward in the vehicle. And it is really useful for drag cars because you can change the angles on these two bars and it will sort of change how the car uh, reacts and how it loads the tire on the launch and down track. So a lot of times you'll see these brackets with tons of holes in them on the top and bottom and that is so that they can make them adjustable like that. Now, most of the time, if you see a four link on a factory vehicle, it is what is called a triangulated four link. This is sort of like a, what you would see on like a Chevelle or like a Fox body Mustang. These are also a great suspension type, but on more serious drag cars, you will almost always see a parallel four link. And many times guys will take their triangulated four link cars and convert them to parallel four links. What's kind of cool about this vehicle is it has a parallel four link from the factory. And while it doesn't have much adjustment, there's only one hole that you can choose from in the front, it's actually not poorly set up as far as bar angles go. Now, I wanna give a big shout out to the guy at the Coastal Racecraft YouTube channel. I watched a video uh, of him and what he did on his uh, Trailblazer SS, which had an LS2 and was just a naturally aspirated build. And I was pretty impressed with what he was doing. And we're going to majorly sort of emulate what he did there on our Trailblazer setup because it's working pretty dang good. What he is doing on his Trailblazer is he's still using the factory four link, but he bought some brackets from the folks at PCM of North Carolina, which allow him to change the lower bar angle. Now, what he is able to get out of his Trailblazer is a 1.38 60 foot. And this is actually the same 60 foot as what my wagon is doing. And we don't 
plan to make this thing anywhere near as fast as my wagon. So I'm going to link him in the description and probably in one of the corners up here. Um, you should go check him out. He, he makes real good videos. He's been on sick week and I always love helping out a fellow dragon driver. So a brief overview of what he did. He basically installed a Belltech two inch lowering kit onto his trailblazer with a set of their shocks. Then he installed the PCM of North Carolina lower control arm uh, relocation kit. He's still using the factory arms and all of that kind of stuff. And that's basically it. The thing leaves like a dream and that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now we're gonna make a few small tweaks to that. I'm going to go with the three inch lowering kit just cause I wanna get this thing closer to the ground, but that shouldn't affect the launch too much, but we'll see. All right guys, what we have is three different rears here. And what we're going to do is make the trailblazer rear work with five lug, make it more narrow and have 8.8 .8 gears. So it'll be stronger, lighter, and five lug and that'll allow us to put more conventional wheels on one of the things that we know is that an explorer rear has an offset pinion because there's a short axle and a long axle and with the axles pushed all the way in uh, without the brake drums on this is 59 inches the factory trailblazer rear is 66 and a half to 66 and 5 eighths of an inch wide we want to bring this in. We're limited on how far we can go in because of the four link bracket. Counterintuitive to most hot riding, you would think that we would narrow a rear to put it into a hot rod. And in this situation, we're widening it uh, in order to make it better fit and be able to use standard offset wheels. So the Trailblazer was a very high option vehicle. It had a lot of extras, heated seats, uh, sunroof, a lot of things like that. Well, in addition to that, it had a towing package. So when that trailer package was purchased, they typically came with a lower set of gears. And coincidentally, uh, this has the 373s, which would be associated with the uh, towing package. Most of the trailblazers came with 342 gears. So we want to get rid of this eight inch uh, we want to go to an 8.8, .8, a lot better gear selection, better axles, just all around better. It's more narrow. It's five lug. Uh, everything about it's going to be an improvement for the hot rods. So what does 8.8 .8 and 8 inch mean? That means the diameter of the ring gear on the outside diameter is 8 inches versus on this it's 8.8 .8 inches. So it's significantly stronger and it's not proportional to the diameter inches, but the uh, the strength of that is going to be probably about 20 to 25 percent stronger, not 10 percent stronger. It is a very significant change to have a, a, a diameter change on the uh, ring gear, and uh, the posse unit in this is a full clutch posse, which is much better. Whereas the GM rear has what's known as a gov lock; it has to rotate a few times before the rear will lock up the two axles together. This has clutches and we'll set the clutches up tight. And we'll probably use an F-150 spring in it, which uh, will make the clamping force even higher. So uh, that will improve the uh, 60 foot. You won't have the risk of taking off with a one lighter that'll bite after you get off the line. The other option on the uh, Trailblazer is to try and find an SS rear. They're like hen's teeth, very difficult to find, 8.6 gear. We think this is a better solution for building a hot rod that's on the low down, uh, bucks down effort. And uh, the 8.8 is, is, has a outstanding reputation for strength. <laughs> when one axle starts spinning this little governor weight kicks out and then it starts pushing this compresses the clutches and that's what locks it up so you have to have a tire spinning 
for it to have the governor lock the rear. That's why it's called a gov lock. the GM axle which is 30 spline to the Ford that's 31 spline you think one splines that that much but if you measure the diameter there's about 60 thousandths more diameter on this spline that's roughly 10 percent stronger than no, Calvin and his tuning abilities we're gonna need that <laughs> guys next we're going to talk about the rear end gear ratio selection now this is something that's pretty important on any drag car but especially a drag and drive car now there's four things to consider with rear end gear ratio and the first thing is you have to see what's available for the rear diff that you plan to run in our case we want to run a ford 8.8 .8. And we want to run a factory gear set because of expense and the reliability that we've seen in the past. So for us, the gear ratios we have available are 273, 3.08, 327, 355, 373, and 410. Now the next thing that you need to consider is starting line ratio. Now some of you might be wondering what the heck is a starting line ratio. Starting line ratio is calculated by taking the uh, launch gear ratio in your transmission, usually it's first gear for most guys, and multiplying that by your rear end gear ratio. Now there's a lot of charts out there that will sort of recommend a starting line ratio for the uh, weight of the vehicle and the stroke of the crankshaft. You kind of have to take them with a grain of salt because most of them don't mention anything about tire height. Tire height will have a great effect on how the car behaves off the line because if you go with a shorter tire, it will act like a higher numerical ratio. In our case, we plan to go with a 28 inch tall tire, which is a pretty uh, normal tire height. So I'm gonna assume that most of them are built around a 28 inch tall tire. The chart that I found said for a 4,500 pound vehicle and a four inch stroke, you should target a starting line ratio of 10.25. Now, as I've mentioned a couple times, we're running an eight HP 70 transmission in this car. The first gear ratio on that is 4.7 to one. If we take that 10.25 and divide it by our first gear ratio, we should get a recommended rear end gear ratio from that. And that comes out to 2.17. Now, 
There's probably some manufacturer somewhere that offers a 2.17 gear ratio, but I don't want to go 300 miles per hour with this thing, so that's not going to work. Luckily, with the 8HP70, we have the option to leave in second gear. With the Max ECU firmware flashed onto the TCU, we have the ability to transbrake in second gear. The second gear ratio of an 8HP70 is 3.14 to 1. So if we take that 10 and a quarter divided by 3.14, that comes out to 3.26. This is a little more reasonable, but as we will find, and the other things to consider, it doesn't really jive well with them either. The next thing to consider is the RPM through the traps. Now, typically you want to target the RPM through the traps to be around the power peak of the engine. This way you get the most use of your power band through every gear, and it will usually result in a car that accelerates better and cuts better ETs. Now, in the case of a car that we want to go 10.00, they usually trap around 130 to 135. Being a turbo car, I expect this thing to top and charge a little bit more. So we're gonna target 135. Now with the engine that we're using, the uh, target RPM is gonna be 7,500 RPM. And as I've mentioned, we're going with a 28 inch tall tire. So if we do some calculations based on gear ratio calculators, they're commonly available, look one up. Don't forget to include converter slip. Uh, in our case, it's zero because we have a lock up torque converter and it will be locked up. So the gear ratio required to go 7,500 RPMs and 135 miles per hour will be 4.62 to one. So as you can see, our starting lane ratio needs and our uh, through the traps needs they're pretty different from one another. We're gonna go with a 410 ratio because it's sorta of in the middle of the two, but it's possible we may have to tweak on this in the future. We'll have to see how the car launches and sorta of make a decision from there. The last thing to consider on a drag and drive car is going down the highway. Now, some people like to cruise down the highway at a higher speed than others. We usually cruise around 60 to 65, but I'd love to be able to get up to 70 miles per hour comfortably, uh, especially in this car, since I plan to drive it on the street quite a bit. If we use those gear ratio calculators that I talked about, and we consider it with a 0.67 overdrive, which is the eighth gear ratio on the 8HP, at 70 miles per hour with a 28 inch tall tire, that is 2300 RPM. And this should be a dream going down the highway. It should be nice and quiet, shouldn't drone too much, and it shouldn't have the engine lugged down, but it should be right in a, a good RPM range where the engine is happy. And so I think a 410 is gonna work out great for going down the highway. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on how to build the ultimate rear end setup for your drag and drive car. We still need to get this thing the rest of the way assembled and thrown into the car, but that should give you the basics of how to do one in yours. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.